In this video, we're talking about something perhaps a little morbid, perhaps not. Let's uh, get our thoughts away from the area that we're in and think about the kind of photographs, the kind of amazing photographs that we can find in places just like this. video about a year ago touching on churchyards and, uh, and cemeteries but I was just in a churchyard it was a relatively small place and not over abundant with uh, opportunities quite unlike this for some of you you'll need to get over the, the sheer kind of horror uh, and yeah, thought processes are saying, well, you shouldn't be there doing that. It's desecration or whatever you might think about it because it really isn't. You know, this is a public space. All of the graves here celebrate the life of people who have sadly passed. And this cemetery is one of the large cemeteries in Norwich uh, that is very, very special because this cemetery is mostly for the people who didn't have a faith. Not that that's at all important, but the age and the size and sheer yeah, growth and abundance of this place makes it the absolute perfect location to go out with the camera and get some incredibly moody photographs. My expectation today is that the photos are going to be black and white and that's because that's how I'm really going to extract the most out of this location. And if they're not black and white then they're going to be heavily desaturated and um, yeah, very likely quite underexposed. Maybe not in camera, there's a reason why I won't necessarily underexpose in camera. I'll underexpose and darken them down a lot in post. If I underexpose in camera I will lose the detail, I'll get noise in the shadows um, and it's better to expose to the right uh, and if you don't know what that means I'll produce a video about it very soon um, but exposing to the right basically is expose the image for the highlights and not for the shadows because you can take the shadows down in post-production whereas you can't pull the highlights up in post-production so easily because even if the detail is there so is the noise and you don't want the noise you don't get the noise in the brighter parts of the image, therefore if you expose for the brighter parts, you can take those down, you can take the shadows down and then you can really get, uh, get clean images. The opportunities in these places are uh, they're just immeasurable and you've got simple shots from the kind of image that I've got here on this gravestone behind me with the, the ivy climbing up. I do like taking these images. I've shot a few of them in recent times and I'll get that in a minute. You've also got far more complicated images. Images where you're kind of struggling in the same way as you might with um, uh, woodland because I mean let, let's face it look at the place it's it's, it's semi woodland isn't it? I mean the, yeah, nature is very much taken over here so finding compositions where you're trying to perhaps simplify things a little bit can be, well, I'm not going to say terribly challenging because I think here certainly a lot easier than they would be in uh, a, a woodland setting or pure woodland setting, shall we call it. Because here we've got things to kind of focus on and what we can then use is the, uh, the semi-woodland setting that we have around us as just kind of soft background. So one of the things that I'll probably be using quite a lot here as well as black and white is a, a, a quite a wide open shutter to make sure that uh, I have focus fall off. So for this shot here I'm not entirely certain how I'm going to do it yet. I'm just particularly interested in the way in which these few little uh, ivy um, fingers if you like are creeping up this old stone 1877 is the date on it. I'm going to use the camera off the tripod initially to try and frame something up and I'll get it on the back of the screen and if I feel that I can get it handheld I won't use the tripod. 
yeah I quite like that we'll uh, we'll put that on screen and uh, see what you think of that one In truth, places like this have almost limitless possibilities. Uh, everywhere I turn, there's something new to photograph and interesting ways of doing it as well because there's always something to kind of shoot through. There's something to get into the foreground or there's something to get into the background. And I'm always conscious of throwing one or the other out of focus to really kind of emphasize what the subject is. I'm here. I don't know whether this is a great shot. The, the wind is very, you can probably hear it. Uh, it's very breezy and blustery today. There's a lot of cloud and then it keeps uh, breaking and we get the sun coming through and it just blitzes the place with light, which um, is incredibly difficult to control. Uh, so uh, I'm shooting mostly when the sun's behind cloud. But what we have here is um, the kind of layers looking through. So we've got the tree. I'm not sure I'm going to get the tree and we've got this a uh, large black stone behind it from Her uh, Harry, Harry, not Harry, Henry Charles Riches um, and died 1895, born 1819, so yeah, there, there's, there's some age here and, uh, and his wife 1913 died, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that stone's over a hundred years old and you can see how it's leaning into the tree now which of course way back when that tree wouldn't have been there but back to the composition looking past the stone we've got this cross at the back there uh, that's a, a nice jaunty angle as the, uh, the the ground underneath it has uh, kind of collapsed and such and again there's a great shot there so I'm going to uh, I'm going to take that I don't I haven't used the tripod yet. I don't think I want to. I think it's. I think the environment is probably just that little bit. This is going to sound stupid, but the, the, the environment for me is that little bit more dynamic to want to work handheld than it is to you know, use a use the tripod. Um, yeah, I, I, I realise how daft that sounds. I really do. But anyway, uh, I'm going to get that shot and. Uh, I'll put that up on screen for you. Now this tree is really interesting it's got such shape and form to it it's a really uh, really nice tree in itself it's providing a perfect frame for something beyond it now a few of my videos recently have been talking about shape and form uh, you can uh, see them up in the corner here and uh, whilst I'm not talking about shape and form uh, for the purposes of framing here you should never really ignore the opportunities that you get from kind of looking through things like this. Now I'm not looking through a, a gap here, although it might work, don't think it will. I'm looking through the way this, this yoke, well it's not, I don't know, is it a yoke, but this branch comes up and then kind of curls around down there. And quite close behind, there's a, a gravestone with some uh, ivy on it. So I'm gonna shoot that, but uh, I'm gonna be very cautious of the sky because I mean there's nothing of it but obviously it's much 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 brighter uh, than everything else around here so I don't want the sky therefore I'm shooting up here probably get my screen angle kind of down there like that so I'm obliterating the sky and I'm kind of looking down through this uh, th this tree and just make sure I get some separation between the tree and the, the gravestone. I've got to be careful also because there's another one appearing just because of a halo behind it. So kind of like there and the sun's come out. This is one of the problems I was saying earlier. When the sun comes out, it provides what you'd hope would be some nice shafts of light. But actually it's not really happening. It's just creating 
uh, really heavy uh, highlights that, that, that you've got to avoid blowing out. Although here in that shot, it's providing a little bit of a rim light on the, uh, the top of the stone. So I've shot that. I don't know whether that's the one I'm going to show you or not. Uh, you see, I can't obliterate. I just, for, for that, because of the angles, I can't obliterate the sky completely here. So I've got to be very careful of uh, yeah, really knocking up knocking up knocking up the uh, uh, the highlights in the sky as it kind of appears through the trees down here I don't much like it but it may be the only thing I can do unless I really try to embrace this other stone behind it don't think I can a number of different opportunities here that stone behind it <coughs> is causing me some concern I think maybe, oops, come here, maybe, don't know, maybe, uh, maybe I shoot it a little bit more straight as a, as a, um, what's the word? Landscape, as a landscape shot. I don't think it has the impact of a la uh, as a landscape shot, but I do lose that, uh, I do lose the uh, the stone behind it. I'll make something of one of those and uh, put it up on screen and I, I hope you like it. Okay, I can't dress this up in any other way. This is awful. I spent a long time looking at the composition without actually realizing how absolutely chaotic it was. That headstone is just totally lost in the confusion of the leaf litter and the background and everything else and I've struggled hellishly in post-production to make anything of this. I thought long and hard about including this bit of the video uh, in the final cut and I decided it was worthwhile because it shows that we all make mistakes, um, you know, no one's immune from it and uh, don't get too downhearten if an image that you think is really great turns out to be really awful because it happens and it happens to everybody I've put the longer lens on I've got a view through to a tomb or a I don't know what you what you call this it's a, a small obelisk I've got quite a lot of foreground in the way and it's semi-framed I've got that possibly creeping in there's a tree kind of in the mid ground on the uh, periphery of a fenced off grave area and kind of three graves down so to speak we've got the mini obelisk that I'm trying to shoot I think there's enough interest in the foreground to kind of capture this it's very obvious what the subject is I'm throwing everything pretty much out of focus with uh, f3.2 open aperture on it you see I'm remaining handheld for the, uh, the quite preposterous uh, reason of dynamism in a, uh, <laughs> in a cemetery um, and if you can hear the noise in the background I think they're doing a wood chipping or something further up here I'm just trying to make sure I don't capture the highlights of the sky here and it's the only reason I might have chosen to use the tripod, but I can hold it and get it out and get that shot. So I quite like this one uh, on the back of the camera. I'll process it and put that up and you can uh, tell me what you think of it. Riding in the face of my sunny disposition, I really do like a dark, moody image. I become really trigger happy in here. It's not often these days that I am, but I just but there's just shots everywhere, you know. Just looking at. The, uh, the gravestone sticking out from this, uh, this pile of overgrown bramble 
Uh, the sun was out a moment ago and just picking up the lights on the, um, the, this uh, metal twisted ironwork uh, a barrier over here and just providing that little glint of highlight. Um, there was, they're, they're just shots everywhere and seriously I do urge you just to get the hell out into one of these places you know if you've got any mis, you know, misgivings about it just put them to one side. You know, th this is this is photography. This is really just getting out there and grabbing shots that appeal to you. Now, yes, the topic's not great. Well, I don't know. The top of the, the, everyone dies, you know. It's, just, it's, it's a fact of life. Death and taxes. You know, just get off your backside. Get into a cemetery. The older, the better. And uh, there'll be one around somewhere. If you're in London, yeah, this is Highgate. I mean, just go to Highgate but actually there's plenty in London that are largely abandoned as well none head in, uh, in, in London I realise of course that a lot of you aren't in London um, this, uh, this place is um, kind of really tucked away uh, in Norwich and um, yeah it's well, they're certainly not abandoned but as you see there's a lot of it's overgrown they're just fantastic places just I, I think they're heavily overlooked as um, uh, as photographic uh, locations, you really must get into uh, get into death. There you go, get into death, and go and get some dead good pictures. Just another opportunity here looking through to a, 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 an epitaph, I don't know what these things are called, my, my language fails me a little bit here, I get, it's not a headstone, it's bigger, it's bigger than a headstone, it's, it, it's just a nice, nice shot again just with lots of foreground being um, thrown out of focus but not so much here because the foreground, the first foreground is I know eight foot away from me at the moment and I don't want it completely soft so I've gone up to f10 which sounds like a lot but um, when I'm zoomed in at the equivalent of 200 mil uh, and uh, yeah we're focused on something that's 50 foot away um, that's uh, that's quite different and we've got quite a lot of light in it now I haven't liked the light um, until now but um it's kind of working nicely. So uh, there's that shot there. I like that shot and I'd like to ask you a favor, please. If you're enjoying the video in any way, click the like button, subscribe and uh, share it as well because it will really, really help the channel out. Thanks and uh, enjoy the photo. absolutely loving the ability to shoot through things and get real unimaginable depth out of uh, these shots. It's really adding to the sense of the place. Every one of these photographs is telling a story and uh, oh, the, the, it's, it's an amazing place. It's helped tremendously by the fact it's on a bit of a hill so I can kind of shoot up through things or shoot down through things. So you can see this amazing tribute up here with the, uh, the bust in the center of it. it. It's an astonishing thing to look at. Sticking with the, uh, the, the long lens, I'm uh, kind of working at waist height here and just shooting up towards it. And I'm going kind of through things like these stones here, uh, some of the undergrowth and such there. And obviously there's things all in the way and they're all uh, being thrown into soft focus and they're all funneling your eye through to the subject. Staying with 
monochrome, the camera's shooting in a monochrome profile, uh, it will, it, it's capturing uh, colour as well. So I, I can put colour uh, shots together without shooting um, alternatives, if you like. Uh, but uh, I, I, I see no reason at this point to make any of these anything other than mono because the moodiness, the, 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 the basicness of mono, where you strip out all of the colour, you just get the, the emotion uh, of the, the place. Um, I'm in my element. Sadly, I'm going to have to go back to the car uh, shortly because our, uh, our car parking season, time, whatever, is, uh, is due to end quite soon. So, uh, um, yeah, uh, I don't know how many more I'm going to get, but uh, I'll put them at the end. Mm -hmm.